Here is the thermogram, which you've just seen drawn out in the boat. This, you remember, is t drawn from a number of temperature readings taken at various depths in the lake. And from these figures, we can draw a curve such as this, indicating the temperature at, at various depths. I have indicated here two, thermo two uh, thermograms, one in dark solid line, one in dotted line taken on a different day. The one which you have just seen drawn then is this one in dark, May 14th, 1963. From this picture, we can see several things. First of all, we get a relative difference between surface and bottom temperatures, of course. But more importantly, we can see how much of the water in the lake is in this region that is relatively warm and how much of it is cooler. Here on the September 3rd thermogram, you can see it even more clearly. Notice the bottom temperature here is approximately 6.3 degrees centigrade and down to a depth of about 100 feet. It is about 6.3 degrees. And then very suddenly, as we have brought our thermistor up, the temperature increases very, very rapidly here. This region of very rapid temperature change is referred to as the thermocline. This area acts as a barrier to movement of water from the surface here to the bottom of the lake. In other words, it's a, just like a, a sheet of plastic was drawn around there, or drawn across the lake, and this water is circulating on the surface, and this water is circulating quite independently on the bottom. Now, through watching the lake, now this is all taken at a single station, through watching this, we are able to see the seasonal progression or change in the level of the thermocline, that is this uh, area of sharp temperature change. Uh, you see here from uh, May through September, uh, through September, the surface temperatures increased, this became quite flat. Later on in the fall of the year, this thermocline will be depressed, that is, it'll get lower and less uh, flat. Eventually, it will, and usually this happens quite suddenly, it will be straight up and down, so the temperature surface to bottom of the lake is uniform. This, this point which surface and bottom temperatures and therefore densities of water are uniform, indicates the precise time when the lake has turned over. In other words, when all the water in the lake is mixing, a slight wind across the surface will cause the entire body of water to mix and bring up minerals, materials dissolved in the water and settled to the bottom will then be brought up into the lake and circulated and reused by plants and animals present. We can look at this same sort of thing here in the upper uh, picture. Here you see surface temperatures in the dark and uh, bottom temperatures in the broken line. Surface in the solid and bottom in the broken line. These are temperatures taken with a the thermometer. We can see that here from April, I see this is all taken at one place from April through the following April. Surface temperatures gradually rise until the summertime in here, July, August, and September, and then drop bottom temperatures uh, remain fairly uniform throughout the summer, here at about 10 degrees centigrade. Then in the fall, and this is a very dramatic uh, picture that we have right here, in the fall, surface and bottom temperatures approach each other, but normally they would not approach each other as sharply as pictured in this chart. This, you might guess, is the date of the Columbus Day storm. In other words, at this particular time, Surface and bottom temperatures were approaching each other, but suddenly, with the storm, the entire lake was uh, mixed. The lake turned over, in other words, and then temperatures, both surface and bottom, stayed at about the same level as they cooled. The entire lake, now you can see, is cooling throughout the winter months.